Hi everybody, Dylan here, Living Aboard with Two Hours, number 8, episode 25, beginning part 1. T is talking to Wolfie and he's mad at him for falling into the garbage can and not taking care of Apophis and the gang. He says, why did you let that low-down oversized rat get the better of you? Ciao! I was listening to Yip tell the story about them finding you in the trash can, and all I have to say is that, are you crazy? Why did you let that low-down good for nothing oversized rat gets the better of you? It's obvious to me that you need some help over there and fast. So I took the liberty of asking Trask, Barney and Sheba to help you plan some retaliation. They're going over some new plans now, so keep up your scouting of the joint. And when they're ready, they will show you what they have. Trust me, they're not going to let this go by without a little payback. To Mr. Evil, Nasty, Possibly Rabbit Apophis. So buck up, because they're coming to the rescue. Woof Woof Chi. Woof Woof, Ella, Wolfie and Taco. We've been contemplating your problem with the raccoons, and we're sorry, Wolfie, that you got stuck in the garbage can. It's a good thing Auntie Donna was home to pull you out. Sheba may be able to help with catching the gang, but if not, it may be wise for you to pick the brains of our lab cousin Trask for ideas on how to catch the raccoon gang. With this gargantuan size, I'm sure he could have many ideas for you. He lives for this kind of confrontation. As you well know, being a black lab, he is very efficient at planning and carrying out details. When it comes to the big moment of capture, he'll be indispensable if that nasty Apophis and his gang gets anywhere near water. They're in for a big surprise. Such is the nature of labs. They're water dogs and they're great swimmers. As for your pack mates here in Florida, we are doing well. Recently, we went to a dog beach. Yes, a real dog beach. Amazing, isn't it? The world really is changing its ideas about our species. They are finally acknowledging the important role we have in the lives of humans and they are letting us enjoy some of the finer things of creation. The beach was amazing. It was approximately two miles of sand dunes, sea oats, turquoise water, and of course, dogs. Lots and lots of dogs. Everyone was off leash and free. We all of course went swimming. Being a real beach, we practiced body surfing. We paddled out until we couldn't touch the bottom, which wasn't very far. Then we would turn around, face the beach, and wait for a big wave to come. When just the right one came along, it would lift us up and we would soar towards the shore. It was like flying. Trask, Sheba, and Barney would love surfing. I tried to teach Sassy this trick, but she was happier hanging out in the shallow pools left by the big waves Dylan had to stretch up his nose, close his eyes, and sail for land. If he stuck his tail straight down and held it still, it became the perfect rudder. He can't get as far from the beach as we can because he's built a lot lower to the ground. Also, his snout is shorter, so when he stretches it, it doesn't quite make it to the top. The waves are stronger for him also, so he would tumble head over tail and end up a wet, sandy mess. He would hack and cough for a while, but then he'd try it once again. Hi everybody, Dylan here. Living aboard with two hours, number eight, episode 25, end part one. Jazz is explaining how Dylan was learning to body surf and how little he is and how he ends up a wet sandy mess because he's so small. But he doesn't give up. He tries once again, but he finally ends up going and swimming with Sassy because he's just so little he can't handle it. Ciao! <coughs>